Okay, hello my dear students, class 10, this is your part 3, okay, part, like third class I am doing, okay, on the nationalism in Europe, okay, so this is the part 3, okay, so today we are going to learn what did liberal nationalism stand for, okay, so nationalism we have already done. So, liberal means, it's a Latin word, liberal means freedom. So, liber, okay, liberalism and nationalism, they are closely associated. Okay, we can say they are the uh, two sides of the same coin. Okay, so, like, so, while talking about the liberal nationalism, people of Europe, they demanded okay they demand economic liberalism economic okay uh, freedom also and political freedom also so economic field let's discuss about it so inviability of the private property it means people of europe they demanded uh, the right to own private property okay so next is freedom of markets you know in Europe when there was monarchical rule, okay, they were not allowed to do any trade and business, okay, or to do any kind of, like, uh, they had no freedom to do, like, to run their own business. So another evolution of the, evolution of restrictions imposed by the state on the movement of the goods and the capital. And they had to face lots of restrictions while doing the business. In order to supply the goods from one place to another also, they had to face lots of problems. So, all that also, it was, they demanded to abolish all such restrictions. Okay. So, another, let's discuss of the political liberalism. Okay. So, in political field, they demanded individual freedom. Okay. Equality before law. Government by the consent. Government by the consent means they wanted to form a government, okay, in their wish. People that like together they are going to vote, they are going to elect the government. So, right to vote, okay, they also demanded the right to vote, but right to vote was such that only men, okay, above 21 years and who who has who own the private property, okay, property, they can only vote. Okay, and the woman and the man without private property, they were not allowed to vote. Okay, so if like women were given the status of the minor, minor status, that means they are the, like they are subject to the authority of either husband or the, or the fathers. Okay, women had no like freedom. Okay, they were either under the authority of the husband, otherwise fathers. Okay, so let's talk about Germany. So this is the map of Europe. So in Ger okay, Germany at the time, okay, at the time Germany was divided into small, small kingdoms. Okay, like it was divided into thirty-nine confederation, thirty-nine states. Okay, and each state has its own currency. Okay, it's has its own uh, like weights and measures okay there were about 30 currencies were there in Germany at the time okay and so many custom duties so many tra tax okay was there the people had to pay suppose if a merchant had to travel from Hamburg Hamburg is okay this this part Hamburg to the Nuremberg in Germany would be he had to pay 11, 11 different custom duties that is the different tax okay each on each tax he had to pay five percent okay of the custom duties okay and because of the so many or like varied currencies there were total 30 currencies because of the varied currencies also the merchant and the businessman they were facing lots of problems to, to do the business in Germany Okay, there was a lot of, because of the varied <coughs> coins and all, they, there was a lot of time was consumed in calculations and all. Because of that, the merchant, okay, they were facing lots of problems to do the business. Right, 
So that's why, in order to solve this problem of Germany, what they started doing, they started forming, uh, in 1834, they started, uh, they formed a custom union. Okay, custom union or the jewelry was formed. Okay, so this custom duty or the jewelry, what they started doing now, they abolished the currencies. There were 30 currencies, no? It was reduced to two, only two currencies were there. Okay, so and so many custom barriers or the custom duties were also reduced. Okay, and the railway mobility also facilitated economic interest and the unification. Okay, transport system was also improved. Okay, so let's talk about the a new conservatism after 1815. So, conservatism, okay, conservatives, okay, you know conservatives, okay, like having a traditional thought, okay, thinking of the own traditional, old way of thinking. A conservatives, they do not uh, go with the flow, they do not go with the changes, okay, they do not like the revolutionary idea. So, okay, so conservatism was also uh, like, it was a part of Europe at that time in 1815 period of the conservatism. So what they like, what uh, what was uh, what kind of conservative people were there means they were like very autocratic type. Okay, they did not tolerate criticism. Okay, uh, they used to curb activities that question their legitimacy. If they ask any question against their rule or legitimacy, they used to curb them. Okay, and censorship laws on the newspapers, plays and the songs. Okay. So the conservatives were so autocratic that they used to uh, like impose censorship on the newspapers and the plays and the songs. That means the people were not allowed to speak free. They were not allowed to express their feelings. They were not allowed to like write anything against the king. Okay. So the conservative kind of people were like that in Europe. So see, conservatives like were there, but in France, Napoleon was there. So Napoleon was like, he, though he like, he wanted to be a king, but he was, he liked only the revolutionary ideas, Napoleon. Okay, so because of his revolutionary like rational thinking, okay, so, so many changes was going on in France, okay, revolutionary ideas was going on, because, and because of his revolutionary ideas, okay, all the European, okay, countries, all the European countries, Germany, Poland and all, they were also, like, they were also doing, they were also being influenced by France, okay, so, because of the increasing influence of Napoleon in France, Okay, the conservative, those who want to like keep the traditional thought and all, okay, the conservative were very afraid. Okay, so see what they started doing in order to in order to stop Napoleon and and his revolutionary policies. What they started doing now, they started saying that uh, we want to preserve. Okay, these conservative people they wanted to preserve monarchy. They wanted to preserve social hierarchies. Social hierarchies means uh, nobility, okay, clergy, nobility, all these division of the society, monarchy, okay, property and family. They wanted to, they don't want to change, okay, and they uh, did not propose to return to the pre-revolutionary days. So they also realized conservatives. What they realized: modern army, efficient bureaucracy. Bureaucracy means like high class people. A dynamic economy and the evolution of the feudalism and served them could strengthen the autocratic monarchies in Europe. Okay, that's why they planned like different, uh, different conservative. Okay, having the idea of conservative, different countries like Britain, Austria. Okay, Britain, Austria, Prussia. Okay, and Russia. These four powers they tried. Okay, they combined together, they collectively defeated Napoleon. Okay, they did not like the idea of Napoleon, that's why they collectively defeated Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo in the year 1815. Okay, and Napoleon was obviously defeated. So after defeating Napoleon, 
then these four great powers, Britain, Austria, Prussia, Russia, they came to the agreement, they signed a treaty, that is called the Treaty of Vienna, okay, in 1815. And it was hosted, the Treaty of Vienna was hosted by the Austrian Chancellor, that is Duke Metternich. Okay, so by signing the Treaty of Vienna by four great powers, what they wanted to bring? They wanted to like establish the Bourbon dynasty, that is monarchical government. And they wanted to uh, like France lost its territories annexed by the Napoleon. Whatever the uh, territories annexed by France was again it was it was given back. And German confederation, the, like German was divided in 39 states, it was kept like that only and set up boundaries to prevent the French expansion. So at the boundary of the France, okay, there were like different countries were set up in order to prevent France, France expansion in Europe. Okay, so for that, what they started doing, the kingdom of Netherlands, so Netherlands is there. The kingdom of uh, Netherlands was set up at the north of Belgium, okay, and Genoa, Genoa is in Italy, Genoa was, okay, added at the Piedmont in south, it's in Italy only, okay, and Prussia was given the western territories, okay, and Austria was given, okay, Austria is there, Austria was given the territory of Italy, northern Italy, okay, and Russia was, Russia is there, Russia was given part of Poland, okay, part of Poland, and Prussia only again, Prussia was given part of Germany, that is, sectioning part of Germany, okay, so, this way, they wanted to prevent the expansion of France in Europe, okay, so, Actually, the main aim, the main objective of signing the Treaty of Vienna by three, four great powers, Britain, Austria, Prussia, Russia, was to establish the monarchy in Europe. Okay? So, let's talk about the revolutionaries now. So, the conservatives, okay, conservatism was become, conservative people were becoming very powerful and the four great powers, strong, okay, like, Powerful countries were participating in the conservative ideas. Okay, so the revolutionaries, revolutionaries mean those who want nationalism, those who want liberalism, okay, so they were very panicked now. Okay, so the revol revolutionaries also started coming, okay, coming in their action now. What they started now doing, they also uh, saying, they also started that to oppose the autocratic regime, they did not want, they were against the monarchical form of government. They wanted to fight for the liberty and the freedom. They wanted to oppose the monarchical form of government. So, one of the very important, powerful revolutionary was um, Italian revolutionary, that is Giuseppe Mazzini. So, Giuseppe Mazzini was born in Genoa, that is in Italy only, 1817, and he became the member of the Secret Society of Carbonelli. Okay? And then he founded the two <coughs> secret societies, Young Italy in Marseilles and Young Europe in Burnley. Okay, so like they were the like-minded people that they had the revolutionary ideas. So the people from Poland, France, Italy and Germany, they liked the ideas of the, um, this Giuseppe Mazzini and the revolutionary ideas. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about Italy. Italy is here. So Italy at the time was divided into seven different states. Seven different states. So Manzini, what what it started, Italy should not be divided. It, Italy should not remain as divided. Okay, so unification of Italy as a whole should be, okay, that will lead Italy to experience the liberty okay so see see it has to be forced into a single unified republic within a wider alliance of nations this unification alone could be the basis of the italy liberty 
Okay, so unification of Italy as a whole is a basis of the liberty. Okay, who says that? Giuseppe Mazzini. So Giuseppe Mazzini, like he was always opposing the monarchical form of government. He was against the, all the conservatism, conservatives and their ideas. That's why Metternich. Okay, Metternich is a conservative. Okay, so Metternich rightly remarked him as the most dangerous enemy of our social order. So Giuseppe Mazzini was one of the most dangerous enemy for the conservatives. Okay, so let's talk about now. Let's move to the next session. So age of revolution of 1830-1848 Europe. So there was a, you know, there was a constant push and pull among the conservatism and the uh, conservatism and the revolutionaries. So ultimately, revolutionaries only they would influence the whole of Europe. So first of all, revolutionary ideas or the idea of the nationalism and the liberalism first spread in France. Yes or no? In France, because of the French Revolution of 1789. Monarchical form of government was abolished and constitutional form of monarchy was constitutional form of government was established in France. Okay, so after that, uh, like after the being influenced by France, this now another country, Belgium. Okay, Belgium is there. Belgium also got influenced of the uh, like revolutionary ideas because Belgium at that time. Okay, Belgium at the time was under the under the UK, United Kingdom. Okay, so northern part of neither northern part of Belgium, that is Netherland was it was actually under the UK. So Belgium also wanted freedom from the UK, that is from the Netherlands. So they also got the freedom. And after that, the Greece. Let's talk about Greece. This is there. So Greece was part of the Ottoman Empire since 15th century. Okay, so as after France, as all the European countries also wanted the okay freedom. Okay, they also wanted to be independent nations. Okay, Greece also wanted the independent. It also wanted to be an independent nation from the uh, the state. From the Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire was one of the um, like Muslim country, M Muslim Empire. Yes, or no? it also wanted to get the freedom from the Ottoman Empire. So what they started doing now, the Greek also they also wanted. They started struggling. Okay, so as all the European countries, they know that Greece is the cradle of the European civilization. Greek civilization was there. Okay, so. Greece was the cradle of the European civilization. So all the European countries, Western European countries, they also supported Greece to get the independence, as well as the Greek Greek people only, those who are residing in the those who are in the exile, those also they supported the Greece to be an independent nation. Okay, this was was Greek. Okay. So next is the romanticism or the imagination or the natural feeling. So Romantic like the poets, okay, the artists, okay, the musicians, through their songs, through their poems, okay, through their writing, they also spread the idea of the nationalism in whole of Europe. Let's talk about one German philosopher like Johann Gottfried. Okay, Johann Gottfried, he talked about the Volksgeist. Okay, Volksgeist. So it was like by singing the folk song okay by okay by reciting the folk poetry okay by doing the dancing on the folk dance okay we can inculcate they can inculcate the spirit of nationalism in their own countries in their own states okay this way so let's talk about the let's do the case study of the poland so poland at that time Okay, it was Poland. Let's talk about Poland. Poland was divided. It was okay, divided. It was partitioned by the great powers like Russia, Prussia, and Austria. Okay, since 
Poland was under the Russian influence, so the, they were allowed to speak, use only the Russian language. They were not allowed to use Polish language, okay? They were allowed to use only the Russian language. So, in Poland, though they, have, they were like engrossed, they were like under the Russian power, but the national feeling was already there. Okay, so the people, especially the poet, especially the artist, like example, it's there. Carol Cotton's, okay, he celebrated, what they celebrated, this, he started uh, spreading the national feeling in Poland by his music, okay, by, uh, through the operas or the folk dance of Poland, like the Polonese or the Major Luka or the okay, nationalist as a nationalist symbol. So this way, through the song, okay, through the language, through the music also, the European people were like spreading the ideas of nationalism whole of Europe. So as okay, so much of like changes were going on in Europe, but see, at that time there was a time of hunger, hardship and popular revolt also. At the time, during the year 1850s, it was a great economic hardship in Europe because there was an increase in population. Okay, because of the increase in population, there was unemployment problem. Okay, and the uh, people in the people from the like countryside or the villages, they were migrating to the towns to get the jobs. Okay, so this way in the towns, towns were over, like overcrowded and in towns there was an increase in the number of the slums. So much of slums area was increasing. Okay, and at the same time the small producers in the town, small producers means handloom producers or the domestic like uh, domestic producers, okay, those who run the domestic industries, not industry, domestic handloom industries, they had to face a stiff competition with the like <clears throat> imports from the cheap machine made goods from the England. England at that time was already industrialized. Okay, that's why they started using the machine made goods. So machine made goods were very cheap also. It was very attractive made. Okay, that's why people started using more machine made goods. That's why the local producers, okay, they were having a very tough time at that time. So ultimately, because of the bad harvest, because of the unemployment problem, because of the economic hardship, all this led to the utter poverty in whole of Europe. <clears throat> so like in, the, uh, like in the city of Paris, that is in France, okay, the, because of the bad harvest, because of the unemployment, shortage, food shortage, okay, the people of France, what they started doing, coming out of the road, coming out of the road, and they started, like, they started <coughs> doing the process of so the what the government had to do the government had to build a barricades barricades they had to build the barricades in order to stop the French people okay so on the sort of uh, like utter situation the national assembly in France they took the advantage of this okay so the national assembly what they started now king like no uh, king is there in France Philip was there no. Louis Philippe was there. He was already like he was not there. He had run away from there. Okay, that's why National Assembly they declared. Okay, they declared France should uh, France as a republican country or the republican country. Okay, so they uh, then they started. They demanded granted suffrage to all the adult males about 21 years. So the National Assembly what they started doing giving the voting rights to all the men about 21 years and national workshop was set up they also guaranteed that they are going to set up the national workshop in order to provide the employment for all the people in France okay so last is the Silesian we were uprising 1850 so Silesia is Silesia is in Prussia one of the villages in Prussia so in Silesia was uh, the weavers were there cotton weavers were there so like their main occupation is weaving only. So all the people like Salishian people, 
they got the contract. They got the contract from the contractors that they got the, all the materials, raw materials also, and they got the order also from the contractors that they are go, they have to like prepare the they have to prepare the goods. And the contractor is going to give them handsome money. They are going to give a very good amount of money for that. Okay, but what happened after they did all their hard work, they produced everything, all the weavers, okay, they did a very hard work, but the contractors, they did not pay, they paid only half. Okay, so that's why the Salishan weavers in Prussia was very angry, so they also demanded high wages. This way, they also came out and they started protesting against the contractors. But ultimately, the contractors were able, able to suppress the Salishan weavers. Okay, and 11 Salishan weavers were even put to death. They were shot to death. Okay, so this is your third class. So on the next fourth class, I am going to complete your nationalism in Europe.